I mean, I've got 4,900 uh, friends on my Facebook page. That's Tom Tillis, a Republican senator with a lot of very real friends. Thomas Roland Tillis was born in Jacksonville, Florida in 1960. Early on, Tillis worked at an insurance company where he computerized records, which led to a partner position at the accounting giant PricewaterhouseCoopers. In 2002, he landed at IBM after it acquired PricewaterhouseCoopers consulting arm. During this time, he got his first taste of politics after pushing for a local mountain bike trail in his community, which led to a seat on the local park board. In 2006, he took his politics a step further and ran for the state house, ousting the Republican incumbent and winning re-election two more times. In 2009, Tillis stepped down from his position with IBM to fully pursue politics. Under Tillis' leadership, the state house passed voter identification legislation that was struck down by the federal appeals panel, which called it the most restrictive voting law North Carolina has seen since the era of Jim Crow, and said that lawmakers like Tillis targeted African Americans with almost surgical precision. We're going to make this country great again. Yeah. In 2012, as House Speaker, Tillis supported North Carolina's ban on same-sex marriage and helped champion the effort to make sure the amendment was on the ballot, where it ended up passing. When the Supreme Court made the decision to legalize same-sex marriage, Tillis said he'd fight against it. In 2013, with Tillis at the helm, the State House snuck measures restricting women's reproductive rights into an unrelated motorcycle safety bill. With no advance notice to the public or to Democratic legislators, the sneaky bill was nicknamed the Motorcycle Vagina Bill. In 2014, 14, he ran for Senate. The National Rifle Association spent millions backing him, and he was endorsed by Jeb Please Clap Bush and Willard Mitt Romney. But his favorite endorsement came from the anti-choice organization, the National Right to Life. Probably my proudest moment in public service happened this morning when I was driving up here, he said. I just received the endorsement of the National Right to Life, and more than anybody else, more than any organization I can think of, I'm proud that they recognize the work that we've done to save the lives of the unborn. Tillis said. His candidacy didn't come without challenges, though. During his run, Talking Point's memo dug up a video of Tillis from 2012, where he seemingly called North Carolina's white population the traditional population. The traditional population in North Carolina and in the, in the, in the United States is more or less stable. It's not growing. The African-American population is roughly growing, but the Hispanic population and the other immigrant populations are growing uh, in significant numbers. According to Tillis' campaign, when he said traditional population, he definitely didn't mean white people. His campaign said traditional North Carolinians refers to North Carolinians who've been here for a few generations. Huh. Got it. Another video from 2011 resurfaced during Tillis' Senate run, too. In the video, which was compared to Romney's 47% remarks, Tillis said the government should divide and conquer welfare benefits by drug testing low-income people who receive benefits. What we have to do is find a way to divide and conquer the people who are on assistance. And we need to get those folks to look down at these people who choose to get into a condition that makes them dependent on the government and say at some point, you're on your own. We may end up taking care of those babies, but we're not going to take care of you. In 2014, Tillis went on to win the U.S. Senate with less than half the vote, clocking in at 48.87%, the lowest winning percentage in North Carolina history. Tillis paid Cambridge Analytica $30,000 during his run, on top of the $150,000 the North Carolina Republican Party provided to Cambridge during the campaign. The data firm is notorious for allegedly stealing private information from over 50 million Facebook users, and critics claim they may have used that information to usher in Tillis' win. One thing I would encourage people to do is go to Facebook. I, I'm a proud member of Facebook. Just As of 2017, Tillis was the fourth highest recipient of NRA funding. He raked in over $4 million in his favor from the now struggling organization, which probably wishes it could have that back right now. Because the NRA has put itself in this dire financial state with its profligate spending, its self-dealing, etc., it can't actually afford to spend on elections the way it was. By 2019, Tillis had voted in line with Trump 94.7% percent of the time, including supporting Trump's national emergency declaration at the border. But Tillis didn't always support it. Just 18 days before he voted in Trump's favor, Tillis penned an op-ed in the Washington Post titled, I support Trump's vision on border security, but I would vote against the emergency. Twelve Republicans actually did vote against the emergency, but they didn't include the author of that op-ed, which is weird considering the whole article contains reasons he wouldn't support the thing he ended up supporting. But he announced moments before the vote started that he was changing his mind. He said, quote, 
We have to recognize that we have a crisis at the border. In 2016, Trump carried Tillis State by more than three percentage points. As long as Tillis keeps voting in line with the steak man. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had. Even if it is a last second buzzer beater, he should be able to hold on to Trump's most fervent supporters. But in a swing state like North Carolina, he's very likely to lose some of those Facebook friends.